Hi, my name is Phil, and my wife Amy and I are building a Chesapeake Lightcraft teardrop camper. Get your clamps ready. Things are about to go clamp crazy. And since there's a lot that goes on at the same time when you're finishing your build, you might actually run out of clamps. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You buy them in bulk, right? The build manual goes in this order. Building the doors, sills, and hinges. Finishing the galley hatch. Finishing the top hatch flange spacers. Assembling and fitting the door sills. Assembling and installing the cabin shelf. Finishing and installing the hinges. Installing the eyebrows. Epoxying and finishing the shell. And integrating the shell with your trailer. Of course, some of these things can be done in parallel and other things need to be done in order. You'll also find yourself cutting holes and installing the electronics if you want them, and if you bought one, building and installing the galley insert. You'll find yourself putting things on and taking things off the camper repeatedly as you fit them, adjust them, and find they get in the way of something else you're installing. You will drill holes. Any hole you drill that might see water, and that includes the underside of the cabin, needs to be filled with epoxy and drill again. Drill, fill, drill. Otherwise, water will get into the wood and may never really dry out again. That's how campers and boats rot. Since the corners on the windows have a fairly small radius for a flat saw blade, it pays to cut out the straight bits with a proper saw. But at the corners, you need something that will make a curved cut. This is the only time I let a jigsaw touch my camper, cutting out the windows. To use a jigsaw, you need to be really aware of what is under what you're cutting. That saw blade will cut stuff including your fingers, your workbench, or even worse, something you can't replace, like part of your camper. It will bend itself, just because it doesn't like you, and hammer little dents into your workbench. The blade will cut sideways, wander off the line, leave you at home while it's at the bar with its friends, leave hair in the sink, and tilt back into your dining room chairs until one of the legs breaks. Be careful. And also, be really careful. After you cut out the window opening, do a test fit with the actual window. CLC provides some pre-drilled holes in the door, the windowsill, and the door stiffener, as well as something called a Fairlead Boss, which sounds like a job title, but is actually something upon which you will mount a guide for one of the rods that latch the door closed. That's a mouthful. Anyway, the pre-drilled holes help you line up the parts using the same wire that you used for stitches. You need to drill out the holes in the door since you've already filled them in with epoxy and they're covered with fiberglass. The doors and door frames need sanding around the edges, and since you'll be epoxying parts together, you should go ahead and sand any epoxy where you'll be attaching the windowsill, the door stiffener, and the Fairlead Boss.
fiberglass tape you used on the inside of the door also has a ridge on one side. To sand inside the corners of the window cutouts, I used a small rotary sanding doodad. Those can bite into your plywood pretty quickly, so be careful and use a light touch. It might help to draw a line to sand to. As you're sanding, you need to check that you're keeping the gap around the door to a minimum and that it's fairly even all around. The other option is to paint the camper black and hide all your mistakes. When you install the window sill, as with all the other thickened epoxy work, I suggest clamping it up and then removing one clamp at a time and cleaning up the epoxy, then putting the clamp back and doing the next one. After installing the Fairlead boss, I used a chisel to clean up the epoxy thickened with cellophyll that had squeezed out around the boss as well as the window sill. The door stiffener stiffens the door, but first you need to do a little fitting. I'm pretty sure everyone's camper comes out a little different and depending on things like humidity, temperature, altitude, the phases of the moon, and other mysterious factors, my doors wouldn't quite fit your camper and vice versa. So I marked the doors and the stiffeners with a pencil to keep the alignment and mark where I wanted to sand. I sanded a little bit, checked the fit, sanded a little more until I crept up on what I felt was a good fit. I did find that in my haste to get done, I'd over sanded a little, but you can't see it and it was filled in with thickened epoxy.
After clamping, I again cleaned up the squeeze out by removing one clamp at a time and cleaning up underneath it. At some point in the middle of all this, while you're waiting for epoxy to harden, or when you don't want to start something complex, you can go ahead and assemble the top hatch flange spacer. This is an optional assembly, but if you plan to install the fantastic vent fan, you'll want it. As always, sand it smooth, and then glue it together with epoxy thickened with cellophil. There are some hinges to install and a door frame to put in, and that whole galley to build. So, something to look forward to in upcoming videos. If you enjoyed this video, or even if you watched to learn what not to do, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I upload another video. Thanks for watching.